Good morning. In the gospel reading today, Jesus shares another parable about the vineyard. And you'll notice that the first reading was about a vineyard. The responsorial psalm, vineyards. And in fact, the last three Sundays, the gospel readings have been about a vineyard. And who is the vineyard? Well, that's the Israelites, the chosen people, the Jews. And we read how the landowner, which would be God himself, the creator of all things, has put aside a land to build his vineyard. He then leases it to tenants who would care for that vineyard. The tenants that Jesus is referring to are the leaders of the people, the Pharisees, the elders. He then talks about sending servants to the vineyard to obtain his produce, to reap the fruits of the labor. But what do these tenants do? They reject them. They now want control over the vineyard and the people. And those servants were his prophets that were beaten. Then Jesus even foretells sending his son. The landowner sends his son. And he is also rejected, beaten, and killed. They believe they are now the rightful owners of the vineyards. It takes time, several years, to develop fruit in the vineyard. And they have been there cultivating it. They did hear that someday the owner may return, but they no longer recognized him. And some even doubted that he would return. As baptized Catholics, we are the tenants of God's vineyard. Do we too forget sometimes what our purpose is. We work hard to provide for ourselves and our families, but many times we become too focused on our future and how we will get ahead, forgetting that everything we have is a gift from God. The world tells us we own our homes, we own our land, we own our wealth, and we own our future. And so many times, we think we're in control. How difficult it was for the Jewish leaders who wanted control over the faithful. They, for the most part, thinking what they were doing was the right thing. But they became prideful. They became overconfident. They were careful to avoid sinful people and judge them harshly. But then this man, Jesus, reaches directly to those sinners. He befriends them, and in the name of God. I think many times we become prideful as well. We think we are in control of our future. Or maybe we get so busy not even thinking much about the next task. Father Sean had a wedding recently, and he mentioned that St. Bruno wrote, how the cross stands still, but the world just spins around it. So we have our plans, we're working hard to achieve them, and we may fit a Sunday Mass here when possible. We think we're in control until we're let go from that job we really depended on, or we get that diagnosis of cancer or we lose a loved one. My brother, Father Jim, many years ago said, and I still remember this, that when our plans are interrupted or it goes off the rail, that is God reminding us he is there and that he loves us, though we may have forgotten or just take it for granted. When things are going well, we get comfortable, and we can either praise and thank God each day for our blessings, or we instead start to forget who is actually in control. We think we are, 
and begin to take pride in all our accomplishments. Maybe not all at once, but it kind of sort of sneaks up on us. In the reading today, Jesus is letting the tenants know that the vineyard will be taken away from them and given to a people that will produce its fruit. He shows us and reminds us what good tenants are. He wants us to love others as he loves us, to go after that one lost sheep, even if that means leaving the other 99 behind. That is when others know we truly care, that they belong to a family. And yes, we will be rejected at times like the prophets and like the saints, because we are not in control. But we should trust in God's providence. So let us be good tenants, producing bountiful fruit and offering that back to the rightful owner. But what is this bountiful fruit? Jesus tells us it's charity, joy, peace, it's patience, kindness, goodness, it's generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. These are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That is what we are to cultivate in ourselves and others. If we conduct ourselves in this manner, and I, and I know it seems idealistic and maybe unreachable, and it is, but we have God's grace, and that is what we should be striving for, then there will be bountiful fruit. It's much easier to focus on the negative things of the world, and maybe the negative things of the church, and maybe the negative things of individuals. You will find it if you look for it, and you can be consumed by it. It becomes a heavy weight. It's depressing. It can even lead to desolation. But if we practice the fruits of the Holy Spirit, we will see instead the beauty in the world, the incredible depth of God's love in the church, and the good in people, despite all our faults. Jesus came to rescue us from sin and from death. And through baptism, we are reborn into the Christian family, the body of Christ, his vineyard, his chosen people. And death is no longer the end. That is the ultimate good news. It is what Christ gave us and showed us in his resurrection. And yes, we will have to do our part and there will be difficult times. And he showed us that as well. But our hard work can produce much fruit. So Father, help us keep our eyes on you so our spirit will be joyful, knowing your promise of salvation, your love for us. Amen.